Can you just detail to us what are the primary factors contributing to the rising incidences of cancer in India? Thank you so much, Ekta, for having me for this show. Um, as we have studied and published, there is a very nice uh, review published in the Journal of Global Oncology, which tries to study why there is an incidence rise of cancers in India. And one of the largest factors responsible is something called epidemiological transition, which just means we are living longer, we are managing our chronic diseases better, and we are living to a stage where cancer becomes uh, a common ailment. When we age, our cells mutate, break, and the cancer development can then happen. The median age where we are expecting to see cancers are around 65, and as our community ages, we can expect to find more cancers. The other reason to find more incidence of cancer, or rising incidence of cancer in India, is also the fact that we are more data capturing. We are forming registers, we are uh, screening patients, we are capturing these incidences much more than we used to because of rising awareness. So I think it's multifactorial, but of course, the fact that we are managing our population tiny bit better is, uh, is also accountable for the rising incidence. Okay, well, Dr. Rajapa, you know, let's break up the incidences of cancer gender-wise. Let's start with men. What is the reason for the high incidence of oral, lung, and prostate cancer in men? Okay, I think easy is to take the prostate cancer. Uh, one of the screening tests for prostate cancer is called the PSA test. PSA stands for prostate-specific antigen. It's a test that is done on the blood. Uh, today, every other master health checkup ends up having PSA as one of their uh, tests. So when you do a PSA, either in an asymptomatic elderly man, or if you're doing it because he has some discomfort or problems passing urine, you tend to pick up this. So for me, the most important reason why the incidence of prostate cancer is going up is because we are doing more PSA tests. And when you do more PSA tests and you find an elevated PSA, you tend to then cascade that uh, gentleman down a series of tests, which will then prove or disprove the presence or absence of uh, prostate cancer. So that is probably the most important one because there is no clear association between a diet, lifestyle, and all of these things as far as prostate cancer incidence is concerned. When it comes to oral cancer and lung cancer, you can put them together as uh, the most important tobacco-related cancers. Now, whether you're chewing tobacco or you're smoking tobacco, it impacts the incidence of oral and lung cancer. Uh, though the incidence of both uh, smoked and non-smoked tobacco consumption is going down in this country, what we are seeing now is a reflection of what all of us have been doing in the past couple of decades. Because what you did in the late 90s and the early part of the century is what is being reflected as a higher incidence or a rising incidence of these cancers. So for me, the increased consumption of tobacco in the in the last part of the previous century and the beginning of this century is probably the most important reason for the rise of sure. these two cancers and of course environmental pollution and so on and so forth. Okay, well Dr. Namai, the same question about women because we have breast, cervical and ovarian which is dominating. Why? So for uh, breast and ovary, we know that we are dealing with hormonally driven cancers mostly. If you look at that, uh, changing lifestyle, westernization, less physical activity, changing hormonal levels for women who are delaying the pregnancies, um, increment in the menstrual age, exposure to the woman with the changing levels of the hormone much more than we saw earlier, obesity, um, intake of alcohol, increment in intake of alcohol, all of that amounts to increase causation of breast cancer or even ovarian cancer. Of course, then there are better diagnostic techniques that are in play. Early screening because of rising awareness of, of some of these cancers, specifically breast cancer. There is a national drive in trying to increase the awareness for breast cancer screening. And so all of that, of course, adds to the numbers that we finally uh, get. 
But there is a real increment in the numbers and that happens because of the X number of factors that I mentioned. For cervix cancer, I will say in particular, we are trying to decrease the rates. The screening numbers have gone up. We used to be the topmost country for cervix cancer, but that has been tackled to a great extent. Having said that, there's still cervix cancer that connects with low socioeconomic strata, with lack of, aware, aware, of awareness, with lack of screening, advanced, uh, locally advanced disease at diagnosis, and hence um, capturing of cervix at a locally advanced or advanced stage where it leads to higher mortality is, is uh, still a big problem for India. And it calls for more awareness for all these three cancers. So would you recommend the cervical cancer vaccine? Absolutely, 200%. For more news and updates, all you need to do is follow CNBC TV 18 on all of our digital platforms.